For years now, Fairphone has been making very repairable smartphones. They always receive top marks on our repairability scale, and in many ways they are a beacon to the rest of the industry, an example of how to create a truly repairable smartphone. And with right to repair legislation just around the corner, there's no doubt other manufacturers will be begging to copy Fairphone's homework over the next few years. There are a few places Fairphone has struggled though, which is why you may never have even heard of them. For starters, you can't buy any of their phones here in the US. You can import one from overseas, but you may end up missing some important cellular hardware. Beyond that, their focus on repairability has historically meant compromising in the spec department. Old or underpowered chips in previous Fairphone devices sort of forced you to choose between having a repairable but sluggish phone and a phone that's less repairable but has a higher end chipset that will stay snappy for years. That compromise may no longer be an issue though. Today we're looking at the Fairphone 4, which has some major upgrades in the processor and camera departments, as well as a hint of ingress protection, all while supposedly retaining its repairability. Today I'm going to be exploring that repairability, calling out the good parts along with the not so good parts. I'm relieved to see a notch here for prying up the back cover. It is pretty difficult to remove though, I'm sure that's part of the IP certification. Underneath, we've got maybe my favorite part of this design, labels. Easy to see and understand. I'm sure this design slightly complicates manufacturing, but it makes this phone so much more approachable, especially for first time fixers. First, I'll go for the battery, which pops out with another quick fingernail pry. This is a 15.03 watt hour cell, about the same dimensions as an iPhone battery, minus the L shape. Fairphone can safely accomplish this easy remove battery design because of the shell on this cell. Unlike iPhone batteries, this lithium ion cell is housed in a plastic shell, which protects it when it naturally expands, as well as when you pick it up out of the phone. Thanks to the shell, they can design the battery to bump up against the parts all around it, which then hold it in place instead of adhesive. Then the next best part, they use these exposed metal contact points to transfer power, so there's no worrying about a fragile cable. Removing the battery is disconnecting it. Right under the battery is something that will blow your mind, a micro SD card reader. With this little card, which you can buy almost anywhere, I can add additional storage space to this phone. Seriously, it is so sad that these aren't standard in phones anymore. So many phones could have a longer lifespan if only there were an easy way to add additional storage to them. Looking at you, 16 gigabyte iPhone users. Next, I'm going to pull out all the Phillips screws here, loosening both the camera and the loudspeaker covers. Under the camera cover are cameras. There's no need to remove these 48 megapixel cameras from the frame though. Fairphone's spare part for this includes the antenna bracket. Combining parts like this is normally something to be wary of, but there are two things that make this work for Fairphone. Number one, detaching the cameras from the antenna is pretty easy if you really need to do it. And number two, attaching a large low cost component like this antenna to something small and precise like the camera is actually not a bad idea. It gives you something to hold on to, makes the thing easier to keep track of, and it makes sure that the cameras get precisely aligned no matter who installs them. The lower antenna bracket has the vibration motor and the speaker attached to it, and underneath you have access to the modular USB-C port. Noticeably missing here is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We have feelings about this, and you might too. It's ultimately a matter of convenience because this USB-C port is so easy to replace, but there's just something nice about having a dedicated auxiliary port and we'll never not miss it. Under the heart label fastened with corkscrews is the middle section of this motherboard. Before I pull it out, I'll disconnect the earpiece speaker and the front facing camera at the top of the phone. I don't think this change of screws is to keep people from accessing the motherboard the way that Apple sometimes uses Penelope screws in their devices. Torx drivers are common, and this motherboard is still really easy to remove and replace. Finally, the most important repair, which we could have done right from the get-go, is the display. It's held on with eight Phillips screws, which thread all the way through the back of the phone here. Compare that to an iPhone display repair, which despite being among the easiest of popular smartphones, still requires heat, a suction cup, and in the case of iPhone 13, a software update, which we're still waiting for, to unbreak Face ID. You can learn more about that in our recent iPhone screen pairing video. It's almost depressing thinking about how different the world would be if every smartphone had a battery and screen that were this easy to replace. Props to Fairphone for reminding the world that this is possible and for making it look easy. The Fairphone 4 earns a 10 out of 10 on our repairability scale for its modular design, easy access to critical parts, as well as easily accessible spare parts and repair information. Just a reminder, a 10 out of 10 doesn't mean that this is a perfect design, but Fairphone has done a tremendous job here, and they are leagues ahead of most other smartphone makers. The buttons and fingerprint sensor are a bit tricky to access, 
And like we mentioned, there are places where Fairphone is trending toward combining parts where it isn't totally necessary, like the camera and speaker parts. Thankfully, it's all pretty tastefully done for now. Thanks for watching this teardown. Let us know in the comments below what you think of the Fairphone 4 and if you would buy it over an iPhone or a Samsung if it were available where you live. 